Welcome back to my channel, everyone. So hello, everyone. So I just want to greet everyone a pleasant morning, a pleasant afternoon, a pleasant evening, whatever time you are watching this video discussion, a pleasant day to each and every one of you. This is Jomer Adams once again, and welcome back to my channel. And I just want to remind everyone that I hope that this moment, as we learn something new, you will utilize this moment, this opportunity, not just to learn, but to enjoy learning. And right now, I have a very important um, lesson that I will be sharing to you so the first time we discuss about your spectrophotometer we discuss your atomic absorption spectrophotometry we're finished with your fluorometry and we're actually down to our last topic which is all about your electrophoresis and your electrophoresis is one important instrumentation as well in the clinical chemistry not only in clinical chemistry but also in molecular biology when we try to fractionalize your dna and other proteins that we actually isolate so right now i'm very much excited and i want i want to go and dig in straight to our discussion it's all about your electrophoresis so your electrophoresis is one of the very um what your electrophoresis is actually an example of a instrumentation that is not just used in clinical chemistry but it actually has a, a wide array of application in clinical laboratory okay in clinical laboratories that we have so i am very excited to dig into our discussion but before that let me provide you an outline of what we're gonna discuss for today so let's go so what we have is actually electrophoresis of course i'll try to explain the principle behind electrophoresis and also the different types of electrophoresis aside from that we're gonna go straight to the different components that we also have for electrophoresis and of course i want to go and discuss to you briefly what is electrophoretogram and also your electroendosmosis so it's very important for us to know these things and i hope you are very excited because i myself is very much excited so let's go straight to our discussion so let's go for this discuss your electrophoresis and its type so when i say electrophoresis when i say electrophoresis these are actually um a method or an instrumentation used to separate charge compounds based on their electrical charges so be it a, a protein be it a dna so we're actually trying to separate them according to their electrical charges in, in addition to that this process of separating the charged constituents of a sample by means of electrical current so you have their electrophoresis so what we try to do is actually to to expose our sample in a solution where there will be an application of electric current and that electric current will uh, mobilize our samples, our analytes into a support medium whereby it will be separated from its different components. Okay, so I know that the, the idea right now is somehow vague, but let me try to discuss it even further. So what you see right now are actually your electrophoretogram. So I'll try to show myself if you can actually see me. So what you have on your screen are actually your electrophoretogram. So the one that you actually see there are actually your electrophoretogram. So as you can see, you have different fractions of um, analytes in your support medium. So take for example, I uh, my sample was a serum. So you know that in your serum, okay, in your serum, you have a lot of different proteins in there. And I want to differentiate or I want to um, separate your albumin from your ceruloplasmin, from your transferrin, from other different components of your protein. And I can do that. And I can do that through the help of your electrophoresis. So when I was, when I'm using your electrophoresis, we can actually make use of two types of electrophoresis and that two types can actually be your iontophoresis or the migration of small ions and, but for now that is not um, the topic that I will be discussing because your iontophoresis if you have heard of your um, cystic fibrosis okay so that is very much associated with iontophoresis your sweat test 
that is what we're using in sweat test, your ionophoresis. But right now, what I want to focus more is all about your zone electrophoresis. And we talk when we talk about zone electrophoresis, we are talking about the migration of charged macromolecules in your porous support medium. So we're talking about your DNA, your protein, and pardon me if I was not able to include there, we also can talk about your lipoproteins here. So, okay, so having said that now, before I dig deeper into your electrophoresis, again, let me um, reiterate it to you that when we are talking about electrophoresis, we try to differentiate or we try to compartmentalize or separate one um, one analyte or one component of a protein, one DNA from the other. So we can do that and we can separate them from one and the, from one from the other so that we can be, we can be able to detect its presence and also later on as we go further we can even quantify the uh, analyte that we want to measure so again those are the types we have your ion topodesis but th for this moment what i want to focus more is your zone electrophoresis so before i dig before we go further okay since we are talking about charged particles charged ions it's also very important to to uh, discuss and remind you some of the important terms that you might be encountering here in our discussion. So first is your ampotheric, okay? So when we say that a sample is an ampotheric or a particle is ampotheric, it means that the substance or the particle can either have a negative, a zero, or a positive charge depending on the condition. So if the pH is actually basic, Okay, if the pH is basic, your samples could actually have either a positive or a negative charge. And you will be discovering that later on as we go along. And we also have your, um, um, in also the case that if you have a acidic pH, your sample can also be transformed from being ampolite. Okay, ampolite meaning um, it can either be a positive, a negative, or a zero um neutral at a zero charge on, on the other hand we also have your anion and your cation and you are very much familiar to this when we say anion these are negatively charged particle or negatively charged ions and when we talk about cation this talks about the positively charged ions okay ions and so going back if we're talking about ampoteric it means that it can either be positive or negative if it is negatively charged ion, it's an ion. If it is positively charged, it's an ion. But maybe some of you are wondering, sir, will there be a chance that a particle can be both positive and negatively charged at the same time? Yes, that is possible. And we call them Zwieter ion. Zwieter ion is both positively charged and negatively charged at the very same time. Aside from that, aside from ampoteric or ampolite, an ion and cation, other important terms that you also need to remember are of course the different um, the different um, factors affecting the mobility of a particular particles. So one of the um, one of the factors that could actually affect the mobility of your particles in your electrophoresis are as follows the net charge of the particle particle so whether it is an ion cation or whatsoever the size and the shape of the particle of course later on as we go along you'll realize why am i saying this the strength of the electric field the chemical and physical properties of the medium and of course the electrophoretic temperature those are very important terms that you need to remember and those things are will, will be discussed as we go along. So let's move on. So let's move on now to the different um, to the different components of your electrophoresis.
So for the different components of electrophoresis, so generally this is how your electrophoretic system looks like. So what are the different components? First, we have here, of course, your power supply. We have here your we have here your buffer. You have here your support medium. Of course, it's very important to have your sample. And of course, your detecting system. And your detecting system could vary from um, the need or the capability or the demand of your test so let's go first to our first component which is your power supply and let's say hello to pikachu giving us the power to discuss this lesson so for the power supply this actually is the one that supplies your what this supplies the current or the voltage in the system it is also known as your driving force why because it drives the molecule through the support medium and aside from that your voltage depends on the ionic strength of the buffer so we'll try to tie it one by one as we go along okay so for the power supply when we talk about power supply again we are talking about the driving force of course your um your samples upon application to your support medium will be stationary so what you want is actually to expose it to electrical current or your your current or your voltage to allow it to move through or to be to mobilize within the support medium and when we are talking about your your power supply it's also very much important to talk about your buffer not that buffer okay not that buffering because of the internet that we have here in the philippines but the buffer that i am talking is the one that provides ion that carry the current and maintain the ph at a relatively constant value so your buffer actually has what it ha actually has two functions it actually has two functions one is to provide ion that will carry the current and will cause the analyze to move through the support medium and aside from that it also maintain your ph very much similar to the the function buffer within our body when it comes to electrophoresis the P the buffer also maintains the ph at a relatively constant value and it's very important okay so the ion now okay talking about the ion that is within the buffer the ion will enable the movement of the current and the migration of your particles so that's what i was mentioning a while back so upon the application of the buffer and the power supply it's very important aside from that very important for you to know is that your buffer um your buffer greatly affects your electrophoretic system or your electrophoresis system and of course your analyte because your ph and your ionic strength both affect your analyte and in other term okay in, in its simplest term your buffer actually is a mixture of your proton donating and proton accepting substances that functions to maintain your ph at a constant so usually we are using your barbital or your veronal buffer and we also use your trisporic edta and i hope you still remember what edta means okay so your barbital or your veronal ph is at 8.6 ph and your trisporic edta is at ph 8.7 so your EDTA, your ethylene diamine tetracetic acid. Yes, correct. Aside from that, okay, so as I was mentioning, your pH and ionic strength greatly affects the analyte. So what about the pH? If the pH is acidic, okay, if the pH is acidic, it will bind now more hydrogen ion. So the ampolite, your ampolite will now be influenced, becoming a positively charged ion or we all know that ion and it will now migrate to your cathode okay so we also have if the ph is basic it actually start to lose your hydrogen ion and your ampolite becomes a negatively charged ion which we know as an ion it will now migrate to your anode and maybe some of you are wondering what are cathode and what are anode? So if we're gonna go back to your electrochemistry, your cathode is the negatively charged electrode and your anode is your positively charged electrode. Okay? Yes, cathode, cathode is the positively charged electrode 
and your anode is your positively charged electrode. This is very much different from the ion, an ion and cation that we are talking about. So I hope it's very much clear with you. So you all know that pos your opposite at opposite charge attracts. So if your cation is negatively charged, it will now start to migrate to your cathode, which is a positively which is a negatively charged electrode and your an ion on the other hand your negatively charged ion will migrate to your positively charged electrode also known as your anode so that is the effect of your ph kapag yung ph mo acidic i-influence niya yung analyte mo and this is very important and we are very true when it comes to protein because protein is an, is an ampolite so the positive the charge of your protein will greatly depend on the buffer or the system that it's um, in so if it is positive or if it is a basic or if it is an alkaline solution it will also start to change its charge so moving on now we also have your ionic strength and we are talking about your ionic strength this now will greatly affect the voltage or the electrical charge or the electrical current that we will be applying to the system so if you have low ionic strength you will start uh, if you have low ionic strength more charge will be carried and then it will have a faster mobility if it is high ionic strength less charge will be carried because it will still have to pass through many ions so it will have slower mobility. So what I'm trying to say is that um, you have to have a constant voltage and electric current to be applied in your system. And you have to take consideration your ionic strength. And where do you find your ionic strength? It is for, um, being contributed by your buffer. Okay? So when we are talking about buffer, there's a lot of things to remember. Of course, that buffer, first and foremost, um, um, facilitate the transfer of current through its ion and also your buffer maintains the pH of your system again going back your buffer greatly affects your analyte by means of its pH and its ionic strength you all know now what is the relationship between your pH and your your analyte and also your ionic strength and of course the voltage and maybe you're wondering how is it related to your analyte so um, the faster or the slower the migration of your analyte depends on the ionic strength and your voltage as well. So, having said that, let's move on. So, aside from that, we also have your support media. Yes, just like us humans, we have support system. So, both our analyte, they also need some support system. Yes, so your support system... So, these are network of interacting fibers or polymers that is solid but drops large amount of solvent in its pores or channel inside. So, don't try to look at my face. I'm not pertaining to the pores within my face, but the pores within our support media. So, one very important, um, uh, what do you call this? One very important uh, reminder in selecting a support media it should not interact with your analyte what you want is only your uh, what you want is for your analyte to just pass through your support media and you don't want your support media to be affecting your analyte and we actually call that electroendosmosis which I will be discussing by the end of this video so that is one reason why we are we're going to discuss your electro and osmosis. So we actually have I will be discussing three support media. We have your cellulose acetate, we have your agarose gel, and we also have your polyacrylamide gel. So are you excited? Let's dig in. All right. The first and foremost that we are going to discuss is your cellulose acetate and when we are talking about cellulose acetate it is a cellulose that is acetylated to form your cellulose acetate by treating it with your acetic anhydride so your cellulose acetate as you can see i actually got this picture from um this is actually a, a cellulose acetate membrane but i just showed this for you to be able to see that it actually has microscopic pores and this is where your um, this is where your 
analytes will be passing through. So your cellulose acetate can be able to separate your serum protein into five bands. Okay, so it can actually separate it from its from the albumin, from the alpha one, alpha two, from the beta, and also from your gamma globulins. Okay, so most of the time, as what I was mentioning, your isoelectric focusing is very much famous and very much useful in doing your electrophoresis for your protein. And usually, the um, support medium of um, of choice would be your cellulose acetate. So what I want to remind everyone is that when you're using your cellulose acetate, yeah, yeah, this one, this one. So when you're using your cellulose acetate, it actually will be separating your proteins into five bands. So imagine if you have your proteins homogeneously, um, homogeneously mixed within your plasma, within your serum. So you will be able to separate them into five different bands. Okay. So aside from cellulose acetate, we also have your agarose gel. So your agarose gel is actually a purified fraction of agar from your red algae. So one very good feature of your agarose gel is it's neutral. Thus, it does not produce electroendosmosis. So what do we mean by electroendosmosis? Up, up, up. I'll be explaining that on the last video. I, I'm getting ahead of myself as well. So unlike comparing now your cellulose acetate from your agarose gel, your cellulose acetate can only separate your proteins into five bands. But your agarose gel cannot just separate it into five but it can separate it from 10 to 15 bands. So you can actually start to classify not only albumin, alpha-1, not just your albumin and your globulin, your alpha-1, alpha-2, beta, and your gamma, but you can actually start to classify them according to its um, according to its um, different types, like your, take for example, your hemoglobin, that is a protein, your celluloplasmine, your transferrin, your hemopexin, your alpha-1, antitrypsin, your alpha-2, macroglobulin, all of those things, you can separate it using your agarose gel. And one key feature of agarose gel, again, it does not produce electroendosmosis. Okay? So, for the last one, but definitely not the least, is, of course, your polyacrylamide gel. And when we are using your polyacrylamide gel, it actually separates your protein based on its charge and its molecular size so going back again when we discussed you there are a lot of factors that can um, influence the, the migration or the the mobility of your sample or your analyte and and your polyacrylamide gel it actually separates your protein based on its charge and also in its molecular size so unlike your cellulose acetate unlike your your agarose gel that can separate it from five bands and 10 to 15 bands respectively for your polyacrylamide gel we actually can separate your proteins into 20 or more fractions and this is very important in actually determining the iso enzyme so you all know that there are different classes of enzymes correct you did that in your biochemistry and you will be seeing that again in your clinical chemistry enzymology okay so when we're talking about iso enzymes of course we have different types of enzymes we have different types of hydrolases we have different types of creatinine kinases we have different types of enzymes and we want to fractionalize them separate it from one from the other so that we will be able to actually those enzymes are very much useful in the diagnosis of a wide array of diseases and you will be um, learning that very much soon so that is for your polyacrylamide so to wrap it up for the um, support medium we have your cellulose acetate that can separate your your protein into five bands and not only that your cellulose acetate is actually um, your cellulose acetate is the one preferred in your isoelectric focusing. On the other hand, we also have your agarose gel, a purified version, a purified portion of your agar from your red algae. So it, it is neutral, it doesn't produce electroendosmosis. And aside from that, it can separate your protein into 10 to 15 bands. And of course, not, but definitely 
not never the least is your polyacrylamide gel that is can separate your protein according to its charges and according to its sizes not only that it can also be used in isoenzyme determination because it can separate your protein into 20 or more bands okay so moving on now to our moving on now to our um discussion we also have here of course the dispensing of your sample and i hope you can see it clearly okay so um later on i will also be linking an additional video that you can watch so that you can actually see how your electrophoresis is actually happening so due to this um moment that we have this very unique situation that we have i cannot perform it in the laboratory but i can show you and i can give you um additional videos to watch for you to be able to identify and watch how do we do that so for your electrophoresis as you can see you will be actually um dispensing your samples into your gel yes and your support medium and your support medium you actually have a designated wells within them and you can actually start to dispense your sample in each of the well so it's very important for you to remember that so when i actually did um uh, when actually i had the opportunity to actually do yeah an electrophoresis that's actually during um, um, molecular testing so after we extract the dna of the bacteria we actually proceed into um, identifying whether or not we actually isolated the um, the portion or the dna that we wanted so what we did is actually to dispense it in your gel a uh, very similar to this photo that you see on your screen and to be honest it's quite challenging it's quite challenging to perform it but sooner or later you'll be um you'll be able to do that in your laboratory and i hope that would happen really soon so having said that after um putting now your sample you turn on your elect your 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 power supply the electric charge the buffer will go on and now the bigger question is that how will i be able to identify the bands how will i be able to identify the different fractions of protein so what will happen is that of course you will be needing your detecting system and a very important thing to remember that in your detecting system you actually have your electrophoretogram so this is not the result of your electrophoresis consisting now of the separated strands or bands of macromolecules I said strands because you can also use this in DNA and separate them according to this their base pair, the number of base pair. So, so going back to your electrophoretogram, that is how it's looked like. But again, it's um, impossible for you to identify it immediately. So you still be needing your detecting system. So there are actually different um detecting systems that are available you can actually do direct observation you can actually do direct observation if your samples are actually dyed or they are already stained or on the other hand you can actually stain them separately using uh using a, a stain that is specific for one chemical group at the same time you can also make use of radioactive dye radioactive dye is somehow sensitive so that is one actually feature of radioactive immunoassays as well that they are very sensitive so you can actually use your iodine 125 one your iodine what uh, your iodine 125 in um detecting the different bands in your electrophoretogram aside from that we also have here of course your uv visualization you can actually simply use your uv light you can actually just directly um place your gel okay your support medium in a uv light and you can um you will be able to detect it immediately aside from that you also have of course your densitometer so your densitometer a while back i was mentioning that you can even quantify the amount of proteins like proteins or dna that is present so you can use a densitometer which is a device that measures the degree of darkness 
for the optical density of a photographic or a semi-transparent material or a reflecting surface. So you can actually expose your density, your your gel, your gel or your support medium into a densitometer, and you will be able to detect now the levels of your analyte. And so moving on. And so we actually have a lot of applications for your um, electrophoresis. We have DNA fractionation, your isoenzyme determination, protein fractionation, and your lipid fractionation. So moving on now, so this is the examples that I will be showing you. So this is an example of your um, this is an example of your DNA fractionation. So you can actually separate them. You can actually separate them according to the number of base pairs. So um, it depends on you, kung paano or on how you do. You want to separate them or classify them according to the their base pair. Aside from that, you can also make use of it in determining the isoenzyme. So this is what I was mentioning a while back. So let me, I want you to guess what are they using here. This is the, what support medium is this. This is probably your cell, cellulose acetate because you separate it into five different bands. So your protein, you have your you have your albumin, you have your alpha one, you have your alpha two. You also have your beta and your gamma globulins. So these are different types of globulins that you will try to separate along the way. So aside from that, okay, aside from that, uh, we also have an example using now your. All right, I think I missed it out. We can you can also make use it. You can also make use of your ele your and your electrophoresis in separating your lipids or your lipoprotein so if you want to separate the alpha or the good um the good cholesterol from the bad cholesterol you can actually do that okay so so that are the different applications now of your electrophoresis so i hope it was clear so if you have any questions clarifications violent reactions if i may add you can actually comment down in the comment section and you can actually message me directly so that i can answer you immediately so aside from that as promised before i end i'll be discussing your electroendosmosis so what is electroendosmosis so electroendosmosis is the movement of buffer ions and solvent relative to fixed support that is what we call now your endosmosis or your electroendosmosis since we have your electric current applied to that. So what happens when you have electroendosmosis is that it forms an ionic cloud preventing now your, your analyze or your, your, uh, your particles, the one that you want to really detect, you are preventing them from migrating into the elect into the support medium so when we are when that happens your sample will no longer be able to migrate and you will no longer be able to um, separate them from one fraction from the other so that is very important so aside from that aside from that um, uh, before I end similar things that you will actually be hearing when we are talking about your electrophoresis are of course the the fastest and the slowest migrate the, the slowest migration so when we go along the um enzyme ice um the enzyme enzyme or the isoenzyme determination rather so the isoenzyme determination you will be able to separate them so the fastest and the slowest you will be able to identify which one is that and that's very important again because like for example in your crea your your ldh okay your lactate dehydrogenase can actually have different isoforms they have five isoforms so usually what we have is that the most abundant and the fastest migrating is actually your L ldh2 okay so you can actually have those things along the way so you will be able to separate ldh2 from ldh1 because that's 
on a normal patient. But in the case that your LDH1 increases more than your LDH2, then that is your acute myocardial infarction or your heart attack. And that's another um, way how you separate that. Okay? So elect electrophoresis is very important because you will be able to separate that um, LDH2 from LDH1. Okay, so so much about that. Okay, so much about that. Um, let's go on and let's go back to our to the this, what we are discussing. So we were actually going through your electrophoresis, the types, the components, the electrophoretogram, the detecting system, and of course electro and osmosis. So if you still have other questions that is, you want me to answer that are are bothering you right now, so please do feel free to comment down below and leave a message on my email so let's just have a quick checklist okay so we finish electrophoresis we finish your, your the different types your iontophoresis and your zone electrophoresis the components the electrophoretogram and also your electro endosmosis so that would be all that we will be discussing so before i leave i just want to leave you this quote from martin luther king jr intelligence plus character that is the true goal of education so thank you so much again this is jomer adams if you have any questions feel free to comment down below so feel free to comment down below or you can also consider uh, messaging me through my email to get a response as well so thank you so much again this is jomer adams okay this is jomer adams and i hope to see you again on our next video and of course okay like what i always remind everyone um, i hope everyone is doing well and i hope everyone is enjoying your time learning right now so i know that you have a lot of time and maybe we're on different situations but i hope that you will never forget to also enjoy learning as well so thank you so much this has been jomer adams again okay this has been jomer adams and of course may i request everyone to please do like share and this video to your classmate to your fellow medical technologist or anyone that you think would would need and would uh, be appreciating this video and of course do not forget to subscribe to be updated for the latest video uploads that i will be doing and of course before i leave so i was i am actually planning to make a study with me video so um in there i'm planning to share a a technique that i am using in actually familiarizing uh, my lessons not only for uh, for my teaching but also for my grad school so if you want to learn that so please um, if you want me to do some videos about that so please comment down below if you want to see more of those videos and I will be making one very soon so again thank you so much for tuning in with me this has been Jomar Adam and I'll see you next time on the next video bye